Hi, I'm Ryan Colburn from Los Angeles, California, and five years ago, at the age of 31, I was diagnosed with Pompe disease. My diagnosis via targeted sequencing served as the decisive piece of a nearly three decade long puzzle. With it, so many things made sense, and it became clear that Pompeii has been with me the whole time. Looking at my preschool graduation video from 1989, that was Pompeii pushing off my leg to get up the stairs to the stage. Growing up playing hockey, it was Pompeii that wore the fabric off the bottom of my glove that I'd used to push off the ice to get up. In 93, while investigating bladder control problems, that false diagnosis of hepatitis B and subsequent effort to find the cause of my elevated liver enzymes with liver biopsies in 96, 99, and 04. That was all Pompeii. In January 2014, when I went to the doctor and convinced her that my lack of strength was more than masculine insecurity, she agreed to order a CK test. It came back high. Through the next year and a half, I had regular neurology appointments with multiple muscular dystrophies hypothesized, tested, and eliminated. I even had that inconclusive muscle biopsy that left me with a perpetual numb spot on my thigh. That's all been Pompeii too. I'll show up on a natural history study as a data point that says LOPD hit in the third decade of life. Having lived it firsthand and from sharing stories with friends in the community who were diagnosed later in life, I have a different perspective. I don't believe that Pompeii waits to participate in our lives. Rather, our ability to listen isn't quite refined. We don't yet have enough of, a, of an understanding of Pompeii that leads to a sensitivity to really detect the onset or progression of symptoms. In my case, they were talking for at least 26 years before we heard them. Five minutes isn't enough time to describe my full 36 years of experience with Pompeii, nor is it enough time to describe what excites me and scares me about the years I have left with a progressive neuromuscular disease. I hope that it's enough time to spark a discussion about how important it is to accelerate our ambitions and act with urgency. The future is super exciting to me. I made a cartoon to try to help explain why. These figures are based on U.S. data given the regulatory scope of this agency, but the same concepts hold true for the worldwide Pompeii community that we're representing. From this first one, the direction is clear. We have an increasing number of folks diagnosed every year. We have to do something. The second picture is the same data from the first, but with the impact of newborn screening added on top. For me, it represents a fundamental shift in our disease. On the left side, it represents the present. It represents the damage that has already occurred. And as that today line moves to the right, all of those people who I consider to be future me and future us, their treatment needs move from prevention to the harder problem of restoration. I find this data to be incredibly motivating because it screams opportunity. Each of us has a role to play in writing the next chapter of our rare disease story. I look forward to doing that together and have the following thoughts on how we bring that critical sense of urgency to keep this story from dragging on. We need to prioritize time and change the way we factor it into our decision making. Symptom progression can be more devastating than any AEs, however, the importance of this seems unrepresented in the risk equation. Speaking of time, since March, when we were supposed to have this meeting, there have been 100 kids born with Pompe disease in the U.S. There will be 25 next month and 25 the month after. We're recruiting by the day, but our response is in years. We need to find ways to go faster. We need access to treatment while still in a preventive phase of our disease progression and trial discussion and design that supports this. With each step in our process, we need to ask, how does this action specifically help someone to improve health? If the answer isn't clear, we should strive to eliminate it. We need to challenge our data to maximize learning. And if our data doesn't tell us enough, let's get better data. There's so much opportunity here with advances in technology and diagnosis rates. We should not restrict ourselves to doing something just because that's how it was done last time. In fact, that's the surest way to halt progress. Commitment to questionable measurements slows us down. We also need to be more inclusive. Our current approach to trials often excludes folks enthusiastic to participate. This limits properly evaluating efficacy of new approaches across the entire range of Pompeii progression. We need to challenge ourselves to get the right data with the right sensitivity to improve our learning about Pompeii and to understand when and how a new approach is working. In the next three years, we'll have diagnosed more people with Pompeii disease in the US than ever have been. Each of them should have an opportunity, if they choose, to participate in changing their future. This shift in our culture, eliminating subjects 
and embracing collaborators will serve us well. In doing so, we can rewrite the story of our disease and develop a new understanding that feeds back into helping those of us already living with it. Thank you.